Call of Duty, a franchise that has been growing for over 17 years. With the latest installment of Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War, we have seen an abundance of new players to the Zombies mode that has been growing over the years. Today, I will be walking you through everything you need to know about COD Zombies in this installment of How To Zombies. Before I get started, I do want to state that Mr. Raffle Waffles has made a similar video and I have not yet watched it until I've made mine and I do not intend to copy, steal, or use any of his content from this video. Everything I use is from my own experience of the game. With that being said, I will break in, be breaking this video up into three different parts. Survival, gameplay, and easter egg. Time steps to every single section will be on screen right now. Now, let's jump into survival. To start things off, we have insta-kill, which will basically allow you to kill the zombies instantly and well, with one bullet and one knife. Next up, we have double points, which will allow you to double the points that you earn from zombie kills, as you see right here in the game. Next up, we have max ammo, which will allow you to refill all your ammo in your inventory and for your current magazine. Next up, we have a nuke, which when picked up, will allow you to kill every zombie that is currently spawned in on the map. It doesn't matter if they're across the map or not. Next up, we have Carpenter, which will allow you to repair every barrier in the map and will refill your armor, and we will go over armor in the gameplay section. Now let's go over the perks. We have Juggernaut, which will increase your health by 50%. Next up, we have Speed Cola, which will allow you to increase your reload speed by 15%. Then we have Quick Revive, which will reduce the time it takes to regenerate to full health by 50%. And if you're playing with other people, it will cut the time in half to revive a player by half. Next on the list is Stamina, which will increase run and sprint speed. Next up, we have Elemental Pop, which will give a random ammo mod effect to your shots. We will discuss ammo mods in the Pack-a-Punch portion of the gameplay portion. Lastly, we have Deadshot Daiquiri which will lock onto the critical location of an enemy when you ADS and will remove scope sway. From spawn you will find Stamina up, up in the top bedroom area on the right side across from the door that you're about to buy as you see right here in my game. Open up that door and you'll be in crash site which will be Juggernaug's location on the opposite side of the plane wing. Then down in medical bay just follow the way I go in my game and you will find speed cola down at the bottom next to this tank looking thing. In the back, in the back side of pond you will find quick revive on the back right side of pond right here as you see in my game and then elemental pop right here in power room in the corner you'll find it when as soon as you turn on power next up we have deadshot daiquiri which can be found next to this nuke as you see in my game just drop down from like i did in my game and you'll find deadshot daiquiri right there moving on to training zombies in this section we will be talking about what does it mean to train a zombie and how to train a zombie and how you can take advantage of it. Training a zombie is basically you run around in an area and you gather up all the zombies that are currently on the map and have them all chase you and you're basically training the zombies to follow you. And how you can use this to your advantage is if you turn around as you gather up the horde of zombies, you kill a couple of the zombies and then you watch as more spawn in and you can keep track of where the zombies spawn and as you move around you can use this to your advantage on how you play i personally like to train around the pond area and around crash site and there are multiple spots around the map where you can train or you can just do one giant loop and train around the entire map to gather up the zombies all you have to do is just run or walk past them to get them to follow you and then just keep doing that for all your zombies and then you'll eventually have a horde of zombies also known as a train to end the survival section, we will be discussing your field upgrades and what they do. To start it off, we have Frost Blast, which will create a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it, and slowed enemies will take additional damage. 
Next up we have Energy Bond, which acts like a bouncing Betty, but on steroids. Just sum it up. But in exact words, it creates a mine of pure energy that detonates on proximity of enemies during ex dealing explosive damage. Next on the list you have Healing Aurora, which will summon a beam of energy down on you and your allies to instantly heal you to full health. Say you are really all on health and you, all your team is down, but they're scattered throughout the map, but you're not going to get to them in time before they die. So you just pop that ability and it automatically revives them. They will lose their perks, but hey, at least they're alive. Or you can just think of it as a stem shot, but quicker and will heal your friends. Next up, we have Aether Shroud, which will phase you into the dark ether for five seconds, becoming hitting from enemies. Now, I like to compare this to Cold Blooded for Modern Warfare, but better. And the last on the list is Ring of Fire which will create a Ring of Fire that boosts damage for you and your allies and zombies will gain a burning effect that deals that deals fire damage to them. In the gameplay portion I will be talking about the new mechanics that Cold War Zombies has brought to us. Such as the Megaton, Salvage, Event Salvage, your crafting table, armor, your weapon rarity, exfil, the crystals you can earn, and Pack-a-Punch. Now to start this off, let's talk about the Megaton. Black Ops Cold War Zombies has introduced a new type of boss called a Megaton, and they spawn in every few rounds after you've turned on power. They will throw a charge shot at you that can damage your health quickly, and if hit by a Megaton, can one-shot you and kill you. When killing Me Megaton, their health bar will drop to zero, and they will split into two where they become immune. After they have split, you will be able to kill both halves and they will drop some pretty decent loot and they will drop a key card that will give you the free wonder weapon, which we will talk about in the easter egg portion. Now we will be talking about salvage and event salvage and how you can earn them and what you can use them on. You can earn salvage from killing zombies. They will be, they would, you kill a zombie and they will drop from them. And you can also earn event salvage the same way. You can use your salvage and event salvage at the crafting table for your tacticals, lethals, and score streaks. You can find crafting tables in spawn and in tunnel. You can also spend your salvage and event salvage on armor and your weapon rarity, which you can find outside of the medical bay room in the particle accelerator room. Now let's talk about the weapon rarity. And it goes as follows. Red, which is the lowest one, which is what you start out with. And then it'll go green, blue, purple, and then finally orange, and the wonder weapons will get their own tier, which is yellow. Next up we have crystals. You can earn ethereum crystals to give your perks some, some perks. To your skill class, you get perks to them, and you can upgrade them by up to tier 3. You can earn said crystals by simply playing the game. Once you reach round 11, you earn one ethereum crystal, and you earn them every 5 rounds. Once you reach round 30, you hit 2 crystals, and so on and so forth. Now enough of crystals, let's go into weapons mod, which are Napalm Blast, Deadwire, Cryo Freeze, and Burn Rot. Napalm Blast will cause your bullets to deal fire damage, Deadwire will deal electric damage to the enemies, Cryo Freeze will deal frost damage, and Burn Rot will turn a zombie or dog into an ally for a few seconds. Pack-a-Punch is fairly simple but is, is essential for your survival, but because how you unlock Pack-a-Punch changes for each map, I decided to put it in the gameplay section. Pack-a-Punch has three tiers, tier 1 costing 5,000, tier 2 costing 15,000, and tier 3 costing 30,000, equaling a total of 50,000 points. And to end the gameplay portion, we have exfilling. You can exfil after you complete 5 rounds. After round 10, Weaver will come on the radio and say this. I got a window for chopper exfil strike team. Take it if we need to regroup. I recommend you follow the path that I follow on screen and when you activate the exfil, zombies will spawn and double their health and will be cranked up. When done successfully, you kill all the enemies and then get on the chopper before the time runs out. Now let's move on to the mystery box. The mystery box isn't essential for your survival, but if you feel like testing your luck, give it a spin and you can get a weapon of any tier and you can get a score streak or possibly the wonder weapon. For the first step of the easter egg, you will need to turn on power and open up Pack-a-Punch. All you have to do is just follow the guide on screen and it will walk you through that in each game. Once you have Pack-a-Punch open and built, all you need to do now is build the Aetherscope. 
there are three portals around the map that could possibly spawn in. The portal at Power Room, like you see in my game, represents the first part being in Particle Accelerator. Just right here in between Armor and Deadshot Daiquiri's room. You will find the part there. Once you pick it up, there will be dogs that would spawn. Just kill the dogs and you'll be just fine. Next possible spawn location for a portal is the back of Pond. If you get that first in your game, that means your first part will be at the top of the plane wing, just right here on the left hand side. As similar to the last one, dogs will spawn, just kill the dogs like you see I do in my game, and you'll be good to go for the next part. If you get the portal at the top of Knock, that means your part location will be in spawn just underneath the staircase as you see right here in my game. You can pick up all three parts in one Dark Aether portal, but if you do not get them all in one go, you just need to go to the next round and a portal will spawn again. Once you have collected all of the parts for the Aether Scope, you will now to need to build it at the bottom part of Pack-a-Punch just right here on the workbench. Once you have a build, just pick it up and you're good to go for the next step. There will be five different blue orbs that will spawn in around Particle Accelerator. I recommend you use this next part, and if you do not plan on doing the Easter egg, I still recommend you do this in every game. The first orb spawn location will be right here underneath this little crate thing, just above the stairs of Pack-a-Punch. Just shoot it with any bullet-based weapon, and it will disappear, and you're good to go for the next orb, which you can find right over here between these two computer terminals and behind these chairs. Just shoot it, and it disappears, and you're good to go. Next one will be across the room up on this vent looking thing and if you're w using a shotgun like I am you'll need to get pretty close to it. Just shoot it a couple times and it'll disappear and you're good to go for the next part. The next orb spawn location will be in between armor. Just stand on to the, this crate that I'm standing on and you'll find it there or you can jump onto the particle accelerator and look down and you can shoot it. And the last and final orb will be behind this barricade. It's a bit hard to see, but it'll be right there on the left hand side. Just shoot it and you'll be good to go. You will know you shot all the orbs correctly when your game starts to take you into the portal or the dark ether. And once that has happened, you will now just be vibing with a bunch of zombies as they do the coffin dance meme. Has been going around over the years, or over the year. After a while, you will be teleported out of the dark ether, and the next round will start. Open up the crate, and you can get some pretty good loot. You can possibly get the ray gun or the wonder weapon, and you will get Juggernaut for free. After you've done that, you can officially start the next part of the Easter egg. Just go over to Medical Bay. There will be an anomaly at the top of the stairs of the Spicola area. Just go into the anomaly, then go over to the computer on the left hand side. And once you've teleported into the Dark Ether, there will be a diary. Just hit your interact button and go in, then drop down behind Spicola, and you'll hear an announcer say anomaly detected. There'll be a blue orb, you just need to press your interact button to open it up and a ghost will appear. Press your interact button again to give them a diary and you'll get some dialogue about the map. The next spawn location for that orb is in the challenge room right here on the right hand side in the middle area. Just do the same thing as you did as the first one and you're good to go. The last location is at the workbench where you built the ether scope. Just do the same thing as you did for the other two and you're good to go. After a while, you'll be teleported out of the Dark Aether, and you're good to go for the next step. Once you are out of the Dark Aether, go back to that computer where you picked up the diary and enter the password. Once the password is entered, you're halfway through the Easter egg. All you need now is the free wonder weapon, which I will walk you through right now. The very first time you get a Megaton zombie, you just need to kill him after he splits, kill both halves, and they will drop a key card as you see right here in my game. Just pick it up and then go down to the weapons lab and there will be this computer area and it will tell you to open the drawer using the key card. Once you have done so, you will get this radio looking thing. You will need to go to OG spawn of Noctar Toten, as you see right here in the game. 
gather up a bunch of zombies and I, at this point I recommend you get a bunch of decoys or at least a couple of them and you will need to activate the machine and it will need zombie kills. It's basically a soul box. Third decoy on the door if you have one. If you not, if not, just run around and train up the zombies and run them through that area. You will know it's done when the machine says it has reached maximum capacity. Just run off to the side where you first activate the machine and discharge the door. Once you have discharged the door, you can now get the free wonder weapon. With your new wonder weapon, there are four different upgrades that you will need to complete the easter egg. Ice, gas, lightning, and fire. To start off, let's go over the gas. Down next to Deadshot Daiquiri, on the opposite end of the room, in that little tunnel area, there is this container looking thing like you see in my game. You will need to get a plague hound as close as possible to it and you will need to kill it and the gas from the dog will go into there. Next with your wonder weapon you will need to go up to the top of Nocturne Toten and there will be a canister on the opposite end that you can't get to. Shoot off one shot of your wonder weapon and then you will be able to suck with your left trigger. You will need to suck the canister over to you. Once it is over to you, you just need to pick it up and then you can take it down to Deadshot Daiquiri where you filled up that gas and you'll fill up the container with the gas. After you have the gas container, you will need to take it up to this location at this box and shoot any weapon at it. You just need to Shoot at it and it will open, it will explode, and it will open. And you now have the gas upgrade. With your Nova 5 gas upgrade, you need to go down to that tank that we activated the computer at. And you need to shoot the back left little flap area. And it will go up like I am doing in my game as you can see. And that's one of four done. Now for the ice upgrade. As you see in my game, there is a fungus looking thing. On the tree, you need to have a megaton, shoot it with its charge shot, and it will glow purple, and you will hear dialogue from your one of your characters talk about it. Once that is done, you need to go back up to the top of Nocturne and Totem where you got the canister, and there is going to be a box on a wall. You need to shoot it with your wonder weapon to knock it off. Once you have done that, you need to go back around to where the tree is, and on the ground, there will be a flask. You need to pick up the flask and put it underneath the tree. Then after about a round, you can pick up the flask and then take it down to the speed cola room. There is a box on the ground on your way to the park. Cool accelerator room. Interact with that box and it will freeze open and you now have the ice upgrade. With your new ice upgrade, you need to shoot the front left flap thingy of the tank until it goes up. Once you have done that, you are two out of four. The next upgrade, we have the fire upgrade. You need to go over to the end of the plane, as you see in my game, and there will be a case that is shut. Shoot it a couple times and the box will open. Then there will be a portal next to the tree that you shot earlier for the other upgrade. Use that portal and then go back to where you shot the box and pick up the fuse. Then you can take the portal and go down to Deadshot Daiquiri and there will be this machine and you will need to put the fuse onto the machine. That's all you need to do for the upgrade. Once you are back into the normal world, go over to this box on the back of the truck and pond and you will find your fire upgrade. With the fire upgrade, you will need to shoot the back right flap of the tank until it goes up. And now you are 3 out of 4. The last upgrade there is for the Wonder Weapon is the Lightning Upgrade. You will need to take the portal that's underneath the Pack-a-Punch underneath the stairs. Once in the Dark Aether, you will need to find 3 crystals around the map and suck the light out of them. The first one is at Crash Site. You will find the crystal on the ground near the entrance to the tunnel. And don't shoot your weapon at all. You will then need to take the energy and go all the way back down to the Pack-a-Punch room and there will be a box on the ground in the corner as you see in the game. Shoot at the box and a light will come on. You will need to do this two more times. The next crystal location 
is at pond at the very back on the left hand side as you see in my game do as you did before suck the energy out of it and go back to the box and shoot it one more time and the last location is at nocturne tone at the very top you can actually suck the energy from the floor below as you see in my game do that and then take it back to the box and you now have the lightning upgrade if you don't get these all in one dark ether portal you will need to go to the next round to get the portal to spawn back again once you have the lightning upgrade you will need to go and shoot the last flap on the tank shout out to smoky mcgee for allowing me to use his gameplay of the final steps of the easter egg because i am too stupid to record my own and too lazy a link to his channel will be linked down in the description along with his YouTube channel. After you have shot all four flaps of the tank with all four upgrades of the wonder weapon, after you've entered the dark ether through the anomaly, you will then need to go up to where the computer is, but outside of that room there will be like an anomaly, and you will see two ghosts. They will talk to each other. You just sit there, listen to the dialogue. The zombies will ignore you while you are watching this cutscene. And you can listen to more of the backstory of the map. Once that is done, you will be pushed back into the normal world. And there will be a glowing purple wrench. You will then need to tank that wrench all the way to spawn at that tank. And you'll need to repair it. Once you've repaired it, a zombie will pop out. You kill the zombie. And then you throw a grenade or a Simtex. I highly recommend a Simtex. And aim for the hatch of the tank. And once done correctly, your explosive will blow up. And then the tank will shoot. Then you will need to go over to crash site. And there is a golden ball. As soon as you walk up to it, a bunch of dogs will spawn. You will need to kill these dogs first before you pick it up. And make sure no enemies are around you because you cannot shoot when you are carrying this. You will need to take that gold ball all the way down to where you've watched that cutscene and put it in the red case. After you've completed this step, you are going to need a megaton split in half in the tank. You'll have to escort them basically to the tank without you dying. So escort them both halves into the tank that will just have them walk underneath it and they will get sucked up into it. Once both halves are in the tank, you and your team will need to go into the computer room, activate the computer, and you will be locked in. You will then see the Megaton turn back into human, and his name is Orlov. Orlov will talk about how he wants to get out and how he's panicking, and when you hear him say, I must break free, you need to go to the right door and just hug it and just be ready to sprint because as soon as the doors open a bunch of dogs and enemies and zombies will spawn and you will need to get out of there as soon as possible then you will need to get down to one zombie or one enemy and then go down to OG knocked and there will be an anomaly go into the dark ether and then you're gonna go into the back room in the back side as you see in the gameplay and there will be another anomaly and it's Orlov talking about his family and how he misses them once his dialogue is done you will be exiting the dark ether and back into the normal world at this point you will need to get set up for the boss fight I recommend you get stem shots if you are able to craft them because they will be extremely helpful for the boss fight and I recommend having the wonder weapon with the lightning upgrade once you are ready for boss fight, you will go down to where that anomaly was and there will be a picture. You pick up the picture and you'll be instantly spawned into the boss fight. Once you spawn into the boss fight, you will find Orlov down at the Pack-a-Punch and he will give some dialogue about how he'll help you shut down the machine. At that point, you will need to run around and protect Orlov as he goes through three different terminal type computer things. And there will be a bunch of megatons, zombies, and dogs all trying to chase him and trying to attack you. There will be a bar underneath your radar that will show how far he is from completing one of the parts. Don't do like Smokey McGee did here and just stand in one spot. You need to be constantly moving and also focus on Orlov. If you have the Wonder Weapon, you need to focus on the big guys. 
Also, highly recommend that you go into this boss fight with Healing Aurora as your field upgrade. Once Orlov gets through all three parts of the shutdown process, after three terminals, Orlov will say go now. A bunch of electricity will spawn in and you are going to need to get all the way to pond to exfil. If you just follow all the way through Deadshot room all the way up to crash site, then down the pond you will make it safe. You do not have to kill all the enemies to make it to the exfil site. Once you and your team have gone onto the chopper, congratulations, you have just beat the easter egg. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, you now know how to play Cold War Zombies and beat the easter egg and of course, how to zombies.